The last time I spoke to you all, we, we said that we weren't in the woods yet. And I would say at this point, we're, we're, now, uh, we're now into it and we're, we're um, continuing critical, uh, but it's going the way we expect someone with this big of a burn to go. We're still in you know, respiratory failure on the ventilator. Uh, we have uh, done one operation to remove the burns surgically. He's uh, got the burns covered now with uh, cadaver skin. Um, and today we're going to be doing a dressing change to see how those went. It's all four, all four limbs, the back, the flanks, coming, wrapping around to the front. Uh, it's really everywhere, a little, you know, some on the neck. The, um, most of the face, uh, most of the face and uh, tops of the hands have been spared though, which is really, really a great thing. So that when he, when he pulls through this, um, those are very important areas when you relate with people. So that, that's in his favor. He's still uh, heavily sedated. He is responsive, but not, not in a way that you could say he could have a conversation, but he can be aroused from his sedation. The risk of infection has been and remains very, very high. Uh, we're fortunate so far we haven't had any. We fully expect that we will have one. It won't be a surprise. Uh, it, it's a fully expected part of having a big burn like this. He's uh, obviously um, lying down uh, on his back on the hospital bed. He's attached to a ventilator with a breathing tube in his mouth, a feeding tube in his nose, um, IV catheters, urine catheters. Uh, he's on an air mattress that takes pressure off, then allows the fluids to dissipate in sort of a, a breeze of air. Um, he's uh, swollen uh, probably to a degree more than you, you've ever seen somebody swollen. Um, outside of ICU doctors and nurses, you wouldn't expect this kind of, of appearance. So very swollen. Um, surrounded by monitors and medical devices. This is going as, as well as it could be hoped to go.